Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Scott, and this week we're gonna talk about entering in vendor batch information. So if you're doing batch tracking of items, on the receiving side, you can actually have the, the warehouse worker enter in extra batch information from the vendor when they're doing the receiving. All right, so like I said, this process is gonna allow you to enter in the extra batch information for the, for the vendor. It gives you an extra screen on the mobile device to enter this information in. It's real simple to set up, just a little tweak to a setting here. We'll take a look at the setup first. All right, so the item we're gonna be working with today is a B102 is the item number. So let's go take a look at that and release product so we can take a look at the setup. So let's go to product information management and then release products. And the item, like I said, it's gonna be a B102. And the first thing we'll look at, um, the storage dimension group is a warehouse uh, dimension group, so this is an advanced warehouse group. We have a tracking dimension group set up for batch. Reservation hierarchy is batch. And I'm gonna come back to the item model group in just a minute. This is where our main setting for today is gonna be. But if I go ahead and slide down, just to look at the batch numbering group, this is a manually assigned batch number here. This can be automatic, but I've got it set to manual. And so the main difference here, if we go and look at our item model group for FIFO batch, what, what I've got checked here, the extra setting I have is this vendor batch purchase registration. So I've, I've got that checked there, okay? So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna create a purchase order and do a receive. So we'll take a look at that next so you can see that, uh, that screen pop up. We're gonna start off by creating a purchase order for our item. So let's go into procurement and sourcing and we're gonna go into all purchase orders. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new purchase order. So we're gonna do create a new. And vendor account I'm gonna use is 1001. And the warehouse, I wanna make sure I use an advanced warehouse. It's gonna be warehouse 24. And then what we'll do is we're gonna add our B102 to the line here. And we'll just do one there. And again, it's defaulted into warehouse 24, okay? And we'll go ahead and confirm that PO. And then let me copy that so I have it for receiving here. So we'll copy that. And let's flip over to the mobile device, right? So we're gonna do an inbound process. We're gonna do inbound. We're gonna do a purchase receive. And we're gonna paste that PO number in there. And our item again is gonna be the B102. And uh, we're gonna do a quantity of one. And it's gonna ask me for the batch number. So let's do four, 10, 2020, and then we're gonna do dash 10. And expiration is gonna be 4, 10, 2022, let's say. All right, uh, so we got one there, so we're gonna say okay. And so this is where the vendor batch information is gonna come in here. So it's gonna ask us for the vendor batch number. It can be the same as, as our batch, but uh, let's just say the vendor batch is V123456. Uh, the vendor batch date is gonna be, let's say it's gonna be 331. 2020, and we'll say that's gonna be the manufacturing date and the expiration date on the vendor batch. Let's say it's gonna be four, or let's see, three, 31, 2023. And we can put a country of origin there. I'll put the USA there, okay? And then we'll go ahead and say okay to that. All right, and it's just telling us we have some blank fields. We're just gonna say okay. All right, and then that was completed. Okay, so let's take a look at the item now. So we're gonna go back to our D365 and let's go into product information management and we're gonna release products. And let's filter to our B103. Oops, excuse me, B102. And then, so let's, if we go to the manage inventory tab, we'll go look at the batches. So we're gonna the batches here. And there's our batch number we created. If I click on that, here's our vendor information here for our, our vendor batch information here, okay? Now this can be changed. If you go to the reset tab here, you can reset vendor batch details if you wanted to and make, make changes if there's, you know, if the, if the person receiving entered some information in there incorrectly, uh, they can reset that. 
All right, in this example, I didn't actually finish out the receiving process. It's a two-step process. So I only did the receiving step just to show you the extra vendor information screen that'll pop up that you would have to complete the second step of, of the put away. I just want to mention that in case, in case anybody's confused by that, but I just didn't show that second step. But if you are needing to capture that extra vendor information, as you can see, it's very simple to set that up and get that going for you where the, uh, where the receiver can put that information in. So I hope you found some value in this video. Please give it a like or a thumbs up if you did. I do put out one of these videos at least once a week, so feel free to subscribe so you get notified when I put up a new video. Okay, so I uh, hope you again, I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, thanks for watching.